Hello. Hey, hello. I uh, maybe I should have warned him a little. I just kind of <laughs> ready and waiting. Uh, how are you doing today? All good. Oh, awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, I see there's like a, a a a drum behind you. Is that going to be part of your talk or no? No, 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 no. It's just oh. there. Oh, that's sad. I have, I anyway. have other surprises for the talk. <laughs> Ooh, now we're curious. All right. Yeah, I am very curious. Uh, so uh, are you ready to start your uh, talk? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. I'm going to share your screen and Martin and I are going to drop off. Uh, if you need us, let us know. But yep. the stage is yours. Thank you. So thanks, everyone, for joining this session. So it's going back to basics. So we've seen ASP.NET, we've seen Blazor. So back to where it all started in console applications and talk about how to build them with Spectre Console. So very briefly, and to get this out of the way about me in 15 seconds, my name is João Tunj. I'm from Portugal. I'm an engineer at DevLeting Portugal. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the developer technologies category. And you can find me on Twitter at this uh, handle, but this is really not relevant for the presentation. So let's go to what's, what's interesting. So why console apps? I have to say that building console apps and common line tools is not really my day to day, as I imagine that for most folks isn't. Some folks might do it more regularly, but it isn't my day to day. But I still do it quite often because it's very useful to just explore and text, test some features like when new APIs come out in .NET and stuff like that. Uh, you probably, many folks probably have like console app 77 or something like that, because we're always creating new console apps to try something out. Running benchmarks also in, with console apps and making use of benchmark.net. And also many times to just automate some tasks, because at least for me, I tend to fall back to console apps versus scripts like PowerShell. I just feel more comfortable using C Sharp for these kinds of things. Of course, sometimes scripts and stuff like that, but if it's a bit more complex, uh, I just prefer to fall back to wh wh where I feel at home, which is using C Sharp and console apps. So having said that, and again, it's not my day to day. So it's not su surprising, I guess, that one of my typical console applications will look like this. So just printing out a bunch of stuff so I know what's going on and uh, have some notion of progress and stuff like that. And like, so when I do this, I tend to use some shortcuts. Like I just art code settings when I'm doing these kinds of things because normally parsing uh, arguments from the command line is just annoying to do. So I just hard code things and it's mostly console apps that I use like I'm, I have the, the IDE open, I do something, I run it and stuff like that. It's not something I give to someone else. So this art code settings approach works. It's not great, but works. So as you saw in the, that previous screenshot, I display progress through infinite console write lines. So just if I'm migrating 9,000 uh, items, then I will see 9,000 at least entries in the write line in the console to say that something happened. And because of this noise in the console, I also abuse white spaces or random characters to distinguish output sections. Like if there's an error and I want to, to be alerted that it happened, I just put, I don't know, a bunch of hashes around it just because it's a quick and dirty way to, to do it. And yeah, why do I take these shortcuts in the results? Because Making a usable console or any other UI for that matter is not trivial. And again, we're just usually just trying to hack something quickly together. It's not like I'm going to complete that application and publish it on the interwebs. I'm just like quick and dirty, let's go, it works, ship it. But fortunately, even for these use cases where I'm not trying to do something very pretty. There are some options to improve it. So we can make some things a bit better, even without 
um, using too much effort to achieve it. And that's where Spectre Consult comes in. So Spectre Console is a .NET standard 2.0 library that makes it easier to create beautiful console apps. So what does this mean in practical, practical terms? So it supports easy parsing of arguments into strongly typed settings and commands. It's easy to output text with different colors and styles, which for that situation I just show you where I want to alert for an error occurred, it's pretty, pretty useful. It has some options to easily prompt the user for input. It enables us to render complex widgets, display task progress in ways better than just printing a bunch of stuff to the console and more. So let's take a look at the code, which will be the most fun part of the presentation and most of the presentation will be focused on this. So I prepared uh, a scenario. It's very basic, but it's inspired in something I, have, I had to do in the past, and that's why I found it more relevant. So imagine that we have a situation where we want to create a migration. Like uh, we have some data sitting in some repository, and we want to migrate, maybe transform in the meantime, and move it to another repository. So inspired by that, this is the scenario we'll, we'll use. So I have a bit of code already here where we have the, an, an enum for the environment, like development, staging, production, whatever, just the, the typical environments. I have uh, something called migration information, which is just to present information, like before starting the migration, we will ask the user, do you want to proceed? This is what will be migrated. In this case, it will only be the number of things to migrate, just for example's sake. I have a little type here, a migration result, which can either be a success or a failure. In case of a failure, it can also have a reason. So it's just to say that for each thing that will migrate, if it went well or not. And then we have this here, a sample migrator, which, so the, the focus of the presentation will be implementing the console UI part with Spectre Console. And this sample migrator is like the business logic that actually does the migration. So it's a dummy implementation, of course, with a bunch of task delays. So we have some four methods here. We have a connect method that receives the username, a password, and then the environment to which we'll connect to do that migration. We have that gather migration information that we will use after we connect to present the user with some information so it can be decided to proceed or not. We have migrate async, which will actually do the migration. And as you can see, all of these are asynchronous methods, uh, most return task. This one returns async enumerable. So the other ones will you'll see when we implement the actual logic, like one shot things that we connect and it's done, or we gather information and it's done. For the migration itself, as we want to report progress as we go along, I'm using async enumerable because it's a pretty cool way to just uh, do one item migration at a time. We can interrupt in the middle, we can report progress and stuff like that. And as you can see, the implementation is just a random to return success or failure and with a delay just to pretend that the migration takes some time. Finally, we have a dispose async method so that we can disconnect, clean up and stuff like that. So this is the scenario, uh, a command line tool to migrate things. So. One of the fundamental building blocks of Spectre Console when implementing a command line tool like we want to implement here are the commands. So commands, you can imagine like when you use the .NET CLI, the .NET add, .NET new, and .NET, I don't know, .NET SLN, I think it's one, another command. So those are the commands that we can pass to our application. And in Spectre Console, we can create those types of commands like this. So we create a class that inherits from either command or async command. 
in this case, I'm using async command because it will be an, an async uh, task to be executed. The commands can get settings. So the settings are the, the arguments that will pass in the command line for the command to, to use. So these settings inherit from command settings. And do, because I used async command, we have an execute async method that gets a command context and the settings. Back here, we also have, the, that one was the migrate command, and here we have a rollback command, which doesn't have settings because I will just do a simple uh, implementation of this one just for the demo. But so this one only has execute async and no settings here. So these are the commands that our application will, will implement. Right now, this doesn't work. If I try to run this, it will just have a compilation error because there is no main method. I just we just have those command classes. So we implement it, and here we do we create a command app, which then we call configure, and it's where we configure the, each command, and we configure migrate and rollback and give it a name. So this is what will be used when invoking the commands in the command line. We'll need to call the application, pass the command that we want to run. And then just return app, run async, and we give the control to Spectre console, which will then make use, uh, depending on what we pass to the application, will forward to the, the right command. So now we can run it. So I will go in .NET run. And you can see immediately that we have some information. It's, this is equivalent to doing dash h or dash help. So it shows us uh, how to use the tool. It auto-generated the, the docs for the tool. Right now, the only options it has for the for no command is uh, help and version. But it also informs us that we have migrate and rollback command. So we can run this migrate, but we'll give it a, a not implemented exception because I haven't implemented the method yet. So let's start implementing things. So what's the most important thing to implement when we start building a command line tool? Of course, it's to give the tool some flair. So business logic later. So let's start with adding some flair and introducing some concepts of Spectre Console. So the way to interact with the console, with Spectre Console, I will say console a, long, a lot of times during this presentation, I'm sorry. So is by calling NC console and then using its methods to interact. In this case, we want to write to the console. So we call write and write receives renderables. And renderables are the widgets that we can create. And in this case, the widget will use its uh, a figlet that will write the text that I'll, I'm putting here uh, in basically ASCII art into the command line. And then you can see we have a, a Fluent API to configure our, our figlet here. So I'm saying that the figlet should le be left aligned and the color should be teal. So now if I go here and run migrate, so we have some pretty thing showing when you run the application and you probably already used a bunch of command line tools that print stuff like that. So we can just do it simple as you saw. Now let's actually start implementing uh, the logic. First thing is we want settings. So as we saw when I presented the scenario, to connect to the environment, we need the username, the password, and the environment. So I'm going to create here some settings. Uh, and so we have the username, the password, and the environment. I made them all nullable just because I want to, to, to use in the context of the demo. I want to, if it's not passed uh, as an argument, I want to do to ask the user for the, for input. So when we define these properties, we can 
put the command option, which is how we configure if it's a uh, how to to pass the argument. So dash u or dash dash username are the options to call to fill in username, and then we can pa pass a description. So username to access the environment for migration, and you can see the same for the other for the other properties. Now let's run this and call help. As you can see, we now have generated the docs explaining how to call migrate using uh, the various options, username, password, environment, and the documentation for it, the description appears. So, starting to look a bit better. But now, let's actually use this. As I, as I mentioned, I want to double check if the, if the user passed username, then we'll use it. Otherwise, we'll ask for it. So I have it here. So ask username, and then I will use local functions throughout this presentation. It will all be in the same file, but of course you can and probably should split things into multiple files, organize, the code in the best practices and all of that. But for demo purposes, I will just shove everything here just for simplicity's sake, but don't think that we need to do it like that. So I'm asking for username if missing, so passing the username and it's something pretty simple. I'm just checking if it's not a white space, if it's not return current. Otherwise we will interact with the user Again, NC console, in this case, prompt, and we pass a text prompt. So it's a, a prompt where we are expecting to receive, so the user can type its uh, information we are requesting. So we're asking for the username and we can pass a, validate, a validator. So to if the user passes in information that's not valid according to what we are expecting, we can other rules here. I'm just validating that it's not empty. If it is success, otherwise error. Now we can run migrate again, and I will not pass a username. So it's asking for the username, and I'll just write something, and it's good. If I pass a username here, then it won't ask anything. It's not really a Spectre console thing, it's just because I put an if in there, but yeah. Uh, so you can see how it is. The validator isn't actually doing much because if we try to put it, sorry, if we try to run it like this, it will not allow me to input something empty, but let's take a look at a better example with the password. So let's do the same thing for the password. So let me, Add. But the difference is that the password, just for, again, demo, besides not being empty, we want to enforce some weird validation rules. So it is try get valid password, which is basically checking that it's not empty and length is larger than two. And then this code is mostly the same as before. The difference is that instead of using is null or white space, I'm doing try get valid password. If it's valid, just return it. Otherwise, again, use a text prompt. But this time we also add the secret. So it won't show when we type the password, it won't show it to us. Uh, but other than that, it's the same. One thing also relevant to point out is when validating, when it's an error, we can pass the, some text to show the user. And you can notice here that the text has these square brackets yellow here. So when we are passing text in overloads that support like markup, this is a Spectre console markup, we can configure styles for the text. And in this case, I'm just saying that if it fails, it's yellow. Maybe it's an error, it should be red, but Whatever, ignore that. So let's see this in action. I'll just pass the username always 
just so we don't need to write it again. And it will ask for the password. As you can see, if I write it, it will hide it. Let me just put two characters that are not allowed. So it's invalid. It doesn't allow it to go through. And as you saw, I didn't need to do custom code for that. I just needed to implement the validator because I could also do it like always asking until it's good. But so, but if I put the correct password, it will work. It will also, if I do password like this, it won't ask again. But if I pass just two characters, it's invalid and it, and it fails. So, okay. So password out of the way. You can see like similar to the other one, just change a bit the validation logic, add the secret thing here. But yeah, a nice way to, to gather information and validate it using the text prompt. So what's missing is the environment. And for the environment, we can do something slightly similar, but slightly different. So again, let's go for ask environment if missing. And let's add a function here. So the initial logic is the same. If the environment is there, use it. Otherwise, again, we, we use a prompt. But this time, it's not a text prompt. It's a selection prompt. So instead of the user having to type that environment, it can be typed when we're parsing the arguments. But if not passing the arguments, if there's an interaction, the user can uh, will can will be able to select it uh, instead of typing, and we can pass in the choices. In this case, environment development, staging, production. So if you run it, now we have this little select. Instead of typing, we can just choose what we want. And I can choose development, or we can just pass this, and it's it's uh, bypassed. It's nice that when it's like the user is discovering the the tool, can have this. I don't know if many of you use like the Angular CLI or Vue CLI or whatever, and when following the templates, it asks these questions. And you can select if you want to configure ES lint and stuff like that. So it's something similar, pretty cool. Okay, so we finally gathered all the information we need. We need these three three pieces of the of data. So now, just before proceeding, it's probably a good idea to, to ask the user, is this all good? Is this according to what you thought you were introducing. So we can show the user this and we can do it using a table, which is another widget. As always, NC console, write, passing the renderable, fluent, fluent API, adding a couple of columns. So a column with setting, with header setting and centered, a column with header value centered. And then we can add the rows in just this case, I want a row for showing the username, a row for showing the password, which is not really showing because we shouldn't show the password, and another row, row to show the environment, which, as you can see, I'm using a markup to pass it to pass as the value, and I'm just it's the same as we saw before, but I'm parenterizing. Parameterizing based on the environment, showing that green for dev, staging yellow, red production. So if we run it, now pretty table showing the things. So this this goes a long way in that what I was saying at the beginning that when we we are just printing to, con to the console, it's very hard to 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 rapidly see what we want, like to, to, to have the attention pointed in the right direction. And by using these widgets, it's much easier to, to see, ah, oh, okay, it's table re, uh, with a summary of the things that, that we, we input. 
but in here nothing particularly this is nothing from spatter console i'm just mapping the environment to some string color which is then used over here to create the markup now we wrote the table and now we will ask the user proceed with these settings or not so we'll again use the selection prompt and let me just remove this and i'll show you in a bit so we have this another selection prompt which is asking the user proceed with settings or not and the choice is true or false and if proceed then we'll proceed otherwise we'll just get out of the program but if i use this you'll notice something that proceed with the aforementioned settings true or false Yes, we understand it because we're programmers. We spend our time thinking in Booleans and stuff, but it's not really great English, I guess. So one thing we might want to do, and I didn't do it for the environment because the, the enum was pretty self-explanatory and simple. It was just a single word, but in more complex cases or where we, when we just want to have a little bit better text, we can do it, use a converter, which converts the value to the text that we actually want to see in the, in the console. So in this case, if we are asking proceed with the settings, we want to show yes or no instead of true or false. So if we go like this, I'll proceed with the settings, yes or no. It's, I guess, better for us, probably it's a bit irrelevant, but it's better like this. So it was another use of the selection prompt, in this case for a bool instead of a string, or in the other case, an enum. But we could use the converter and spectre does its thing to map things back and forth to what we want. Okay, so we have all the information. We ask the user if it's all good. And if the user says yes, then let's go. So it's time to implement like the actual logic to interact with that simple migrator class that I showed in the beginning that is actually doing the logic of migrating things. We have everything that we needed in our, in our hands. So I'm just going to create the class here directly and get and put a try finally here. And the try will do stuff and in the finally we'll clean up. So the first thing we want to do is to connect to that environment. Using that first method that I showed you at the beginning. So let's connect. So over here, I'm using Spectre console again, NC console, status, which is a way to provide uh, visual feedback to the user about things happening. So status, start async, and I'm calling the migrator connect async. So while this, this operation executes, we'll have basically a spinner. This is just the same as when we have a web application. We don't actually know the progress, but we know that something is happening. So we are not just looking at, at the, the command line after we press enter and nothing is happening. We at least has, have some visual feedback. So I'll go over here, run it again. Seed, and as you can see, a little spinner. Let me show you again because it's fast. So it's a little spinner just giving us some feedback that something is happening. Not that if it crashed, it will serve much, but at least it's, I think it's better than just staring at a blank command line. Okay. Oh. So the steps are connect, and then gather some information to again, confirm with the user if we should proceed considering the information we gathered. So 
let's add a bit more code here. So again, using a status. In this case, as you can see, it's actually returning something because the connect async method didn't return anything, but gather migration information connects something. So when you are using the status and passing a, a method that has a return, it will be passed back so that we can have that information. Other than that, it's basically the same thing, but again, using the Fluent API, I'm configuring a different spinner instead of that default one, we can use different ones. I imagine we can also implement our own. I didn't do that. I'm just using a known one, which is a clock. So instead of that little spinning yellow thing, we'll see a clock. And after that, again, we have a, a selection prompt to the user if we should proceed or not. So let's go here, start things again. See, yes, connecting, gathering information. You can see the little clocky thing. And yeah, let's proceed. Just for, just in case it was too fast, let me show again. Connecting, gathering information, and asking. On 150 things migrate proceed, yes or no? Yes, but not yet. So assuming the user says yes, we have some more logic, but before let's just wrap up the finally part, which will be basically the same as we saw. It's another status with uh, calling dispose async. So let's quickly see it, but it's exactly the same code as before. So we're just basically everything that returns a task or in this case, valid tasks, I, I put it inside a a status so we know when it's done. So connecting, gathering information, found, yes, disconnecting, it's done. Yeah, so these are basic, basically the our spinners we put on the web, but apply to the command line. So now let's do the actual migration. We have all the information, the the user is connected, it confirmed that it's all good, let's go. So let's use something that's kind of similar to status, but is instead of just something spinning, it's actually something that presents the progress in a more detailed way. And it's called uh, progress, which is pretty cool, pretty obvious name. And we get a progress context with which we will interact. Uh, so it's the way we report the progress and Spectral Console will render it. So it has a concept of tasks. We have multiple tasks within a progress, which should basically mean, well, imagine that we have multiple things like when we are installing some software that it downloads things, uh, installs things, and uninstalls other things and it's all in parallel so it can have multiple multiple progress bars so we can do that here i'm just going to use a single task so nothing like that will happen but yeah we add the task to the context we provide a description and they provide a max value which will be the number of things to migrate so spectre console will handle transforming those values into percentage and stuff like that for us we don't need to do it and with this task in hand, we can actually implement the logic, which will be to call migrate async and iterate because it's a it's a async enumerable. All I'm doing with the results is counting the successes and failures. Uh, we could do something more interesting, but for this use case, successes and failures uh, having a, their count is good enough. And then await for each on the migrate async method, incrementing depending on if it's success or failure. And then the migration task that we created, we increment to signal it progressed. So in this case, we can pass other values. For example, if we were creating a download and it downloads two megabytes instead of one, 
in, in, a, in a go, we can immediately report two. But in this case, because we are really granular going one item at a time, we can just use the, the increment one like that. And finally, I'm returning the successes and failures so that we can use it later. Now, let's see this in action. Run it again. Let's proceed, connecting, gathering information. And let's go. And as you can see, now we have a progress bar with percentage. So I, I put 100 milliseconds, so that's what it's happening. It's waiting 100 milliseconds between each item of the 150. And eventually it will wrap up and call disconnect. Yeah, so we have pretty nice progress. And as you can see, it's a most a much better progress uh, information than printing a lot of uh, console write lines with everything that is happening. It's much easier on the eyes. So let me just adjust this so we don't wait a long time each time I'm showing this working. So I'm going to just replace this. Okay, so all good, we have progress report. Uh, we return these results. Now let's use them. So it's just an excuse to, send, to show you another widget, which is the, I think it's this one, yeah, a bar chart. So we can also present a bar chart. The results, we have more widgets, other ways to show, maybe we, I could use a table to show more detailed information, in this case, just a simple bar chart with give it a label with succeeded and failed, give it the count of succeeded and failed, and give it the color. And then it will create for us a bar chart with this. And just to reiterate all these NC console write, renderable, always pretty straightforward. Let's run it again. Proceed, let's go information let's go and uh, okay so we have the migration results just presenting as i you saw at the beginning it's just random so if i run it again it probably would be slightly different but not a lot but yeah so this would be a way to implement uh, a migrate uh, tool using spectre console just some ideas showing a bunch of widgets, and it would be something like this. So this is the main part. I wanted to show a bunch of different uh, widgets, ways to interact, gathering things from the command line. Now, just for, for fun, let's just do a quick experiment with the rollback. So I'll just replace this with the whole code show you what's what's working and then we'll come back to we'll come back to analyze a bit that code so let's be okay so this is the callback command so let me go here erase all of this and have rollback and what we have here we have recrawl so I bet you weren't expecting this one. Recrawl on the command line. So yeah, probably this isn't the most useful thing unless for presentations like this one, it's useful, I think. But I wanted to use this as an example of uh, a couple of features. First one is uh, integration between Spectre Console and Image Sharp, which is what's making this work. And additionally, as you can see, it's moving. So it's using a live display feature, which is similar to what's happening with progress and uh, status and stuff like that. But we can use it to implement, uh, if you can imagine something more useful than this, for example, maybe you want a stock sticker in the command line. I don't know, you could use it like that. You can just create a widget and put things in there and refresh and it will happened like this. So 
let's just see the, how this feature was implemented. So first things first, props to Khalid because he was the inspiration for this part of the demo as he was playing with Spectre console and pushed something on, on Twitter. And I, I got inspired. But other than that, what's happening here, I'm just using a cancellation token source to listen to control C to cancel the, the, um, the command running. We're creating a table. So old school HTML vibes as uh, I don't know CSS. So I use tables to put things uh, clean. So I created a table centered with no headers or border with a single column and three rows, one for the GIF, one to put some space between the GIF and then the lyrics. And then again, NC console and now live to use the live display feature. We pass the table, which will be the widget that will be updated with the live display. We start it. I created a, a class just to, to handle the lyrics generation that we, you saw happening. And then image sharp comes into play where we load the GIF. We use that cancellation token source to wait for the, if it's canceled or not. And in the meantime, we go and uh, we iterate over the frames of the GIF, clone the frame, save it as a bitmap to a memory stream, and then pass it to Canvas image, which is a Spectre console image sharp integration point. And then I am updating the table. So on row zero, zero, I put the canvas image and on row two, zero, or better yet, cell, cell two, zero, I'm putting the, the verse from the lyrics. And then I'm just uh, getting a time span of 75 milliseconds, seek the lyrics forward and task delay. So every 75 milliseconds, the next frame of the GIF is used. So again, I'm using a GIF because it was funny to use in the presentation, but you can use something more interesting in, the, um, in your application. Okay, so code time is over. So let's wrap up. There's much more. So I just showed a bunch of things, but because I can't possibly put everything in the presentation or I can, but it would be longer. So there is the presence injection container integration. If you have a more complex application or just um, have to integrate with things that uh, are normally used with dependency injection containers. You can use common composition, like for example, .NET add package or .NET add reference are composed commands. You can implement something like that. Common settings validation, which I didn't use. I just used validation of prompts, but you can also validate settings. You can pretty print, pretty print file paths and exceptions. You can use other prompts and widgets like multi-select rules, so calendar tree and so on. And there's more, more things, but Again, there's a lot of cool stuff in Spectre Console. Just because I couldn't show any, even more things that I wanted in the, the demo, I copied a bit of the, the things that they, sh they have on spectreconsole.net uh, website. So again, file paths, Windows, Unix, you can style it, align. Exceptions, which is pretty cool. It's much more readable like this than the usual. Uh, Multi-select, so I showed you how to use selection, but just select one. We can also select uh, multiple. Use calendar, a breakdown chart, like from like the languages in GitHub. Trees, I've used trees, although not like that, just to show like uh, this happened and these were the reasons below, something like that. And yeah, so you have a bunch of stuff. In summary, and again, making a usable console UI is not trivial, but Spectre console sure makes it a lot easier, in my opinion. And even if we are just trying to hack something quickly together, which is my case most of the times, this is pretty cool because it's really easy to have something much better than just with console write lines. And also great docs make it super straightforward to get started. 
the demo, of course, there were there were tweaks later, but most of this demo was developed when I was just playing around with Spectre Console. And it was like one afternoon, I just had the, the docs, the site open, and I was hacking away and like, I want to do this, I want to do that. And it was really easy to do it. If you're interested in the demo code, feel free. It's on my GitHub, so you can take a look. Other than that, thanks for joining and feel free to reach out on my site, blog, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. If these links are not enough, just go to the site that it has more links there. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, so, so we're back and that was just amazing. Uh, I don't know whether to be proud or scared that I inspired you to create a Rickroll in a console, but I appreciate it. So thank you so much. That was, yeah. uh, that was awesome. I, th I think the worst part there was this was actually one of the questions that I had, like, can it run animated GIFs? And you answered that brilliantly. So well done. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you said it really well, like Spectre Console has a lot of widgets that can kind of help you imagine what a console experience could be uh, outside of just console right line all the time. So it's really cool from that perspective. Um, do you have a favorite widget from kind of the component library inside Spectre Console? I don't know. Maybe live display to, to recruit people. <laughs> in terms of work, what I've been using at work, because I was developing something something similar to this to import stuff from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. And I used a lot the tree because when I was importing, I was doing some validations like if of the quality of the data. So I was validating all the properties from each uh, item. Mm -hmm. So I used the tree to like, this item failed and then below because of this, this, and that. So that I can, could then report to the user, go fix this because it doesn't work. So it's probably what I use more. And just the colors, it's a massive help because we can change the colors in, when we are using console right line, but it's just annoying. And this yeah. is much better. Yeah, console colors are very interesting because even though colors can have names like black, white, green, those actual like color values are actually defined inside the terminal. So it's like colors are just, they're just so difficult, but uh, Spectre Console definitely at least makes it easier to rationalize what's happening with colors, which is mm -hmm. super cool. Um, you know, you showed a lot of fluent interfaces. Uh, somebody mentioned, you know, with validation, can you plug in different validation models uh, they specifically wanted something like data annotations and attributes. I haven't actually tried. Mm -hmm. I, I think I saw, for example, at least for the for the command settings. I think I saw that we can put like required. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I've been doing it like that. Okay. Mostly with with the with that fluent way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it, it was such a, those were such cool demos. Um, uh, Martin, do you have any other questions that you kind of are itching to ask? I, I think there was one in the in the comments on YouTube as well, where someone was asking whether Spectre Console can also be used as a logging provider or an iLogger in your applications, just to make things look nice and and maybe even recall people when a certain exception pops up. Well, I imagine we can implement like a sync. Like implement a serial log sync with Spectre Console. <laughs> I didn't try, but it's probably possible. I would imagine it's possible, but I would also imagine it's very dangerous because if you're in like a CI CD environment and you pause the process to ask for input, um, yeah, the bad things will happen. So yeah. I, pro I probably wouldn't recommend uh, trying, I guess, but uh, go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to do nothing. Uh, yeah. yeah, in CI/CD, it's probably not good. Well, once someone asked if if Spectre Console would automatically like disable the mm -hmm. like the prompts for for CI/CD, like I no, I think that's logic from our code. If we are in CI/CD, we'll not show prompts. Uh, 
otherwise it will just show. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, does Inspector Console manage essentially like the buffer, like the buffer? So it kind of knows where things are positioned, but in a CI CD output, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more of a scrolling output. So you end up in a situation where like the the essentially that canvas is just so different. You, it it's it's like a different paradigm almost. So yeah, you're sure. gonna get really strange results, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, no, the, that was a really great talk. I really enjoyed yes. it. And uh, man, I can't wait to put a bunch of Rick rolls in some production apps. <laughs> no, I, I was going to comment in private after this session uh, that I now want to go and build a console application. So thank you for that. Um, I did wonder because there's so many tweets and people talking about console applications. It's almost like there's a console app revival going on. Like I know there's Spectre console, but I've also seen Miguel de Casa uh, come up with terminal.gui yeah. or GUI CS or whatever it's called. So do you get that impression as well? And are we steering away from Blazor, from Maui and just all building console applications? I don't think that, but I think with .NET, how's it called? The .NET tool, global tools. Mm -hmm. With .NET global tools and with .NET 7 native IoT, it's going to be much better to build like these kinds of tools and they will be more efficient. So maybe you don't need to go to Rust, you can, but maybe you can just do it in C Sharp and it's native IoT and will to be super fast. So for those kinds of tools, it's pretty cool. Uh, the inspiration for when I saw Spectre Console, the main reason I was like, ah, I want to try it is, was because I was playing with like Vue.js and it had like the, the CLI that you just you start it and it asks a bunch of questions like if you want to use yes linked and if you want to use whatever or if you use typescript or javascript and those, all of those settings that it will then generate boilerplate for so i was looking at it and it was like this with all selections and colors and stuff and when i saw spectre console i was like ah we can do it in .NET as well yeah, it's it's fascinating. You know, it's like I always struggle with the flags in .NET and global tools. Like, is it a double dash? Is it a single dash? Do I need to put the double dash before I call the argument so that it passes in? Like, you kind of showed how you can easily manage flags in your own CLI applications, but um, how do you find how do you find the ecosystem in terms of that kind of tooling, command line tooling? Um, are there, is it a good thing? Are there frustrations you have with it? Uh, what are your thoughts? No, my biggest fr frustration were really like parsing <laughs> the, the arguments it was super mm -hmm. annoying, but I did already use something else. I don't remember the name, but before I found Spectre Console, I used something else just for that parsing. Uh, but, uh, for, for example, in one of the of these automation tasks that I did in the past with a colleague. One of the things that we wanted was like to receive passwords. And he implemented this like with the asterisks by hand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, good that you do it, did it because I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have Spectre Console and it will do it for us. So at the time we I didn't know about Spectre Console. I just found out about it like six months later. And I'm like, yeah, this would be helpful like six months ago. <laughs> you know, that's a good follow-up question. Is there is there a widget or component that you think is missing that you'd love to see kind of written in Spectre Console? I don't know if it's a component. One thing that I was thinking, uh, because I already had the demo mostly ready, but then I was like, can I make it more complex for the for the event. And I was like thinking, besides having like the progress uh, bar, having like a table or something like that, auto-updating with uh, the things that failed, mm -hmm. but multiple uh, live things are not supported. It's just one at a time, mm -hmm. which is already great <laughs> to have something live updating on the console. But if we could have more things live updating on the console. Would... Yeah, it's but, funny. But, yeah. yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because it's kind of reminiscent of like the island stuff that's happening in front end, like yeah. where you have static web pages, but you have these islands of dynamic content. It's kind of what you're describing there, which is kind of like, it's fascinating to see 
the corollaries between all UI frameworks, regardless of its JavaScript, console apps, you know, server rendered stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, Martin, do you have any other last thoughts? Um, I don't have any. I was just watching the chat for questions, but nothing is popping up. Um, the only thing that we see is, is some comments and people saying that they all want to build CLI apps and that everyone nowadays uh, who thinks they're a professional developer are building CLIs and at least using CLIs. So I think Spectre Console and building your own tools on top of it uh, might actually be a good thing for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for the CLI future. So yes, yes, bring it. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, it was great having you. And uh, again, this is uh, you know uh, before you go, I do wanna I do wanna you know uh, call out your writer skills in terms of like shortcuts and snippets <laughs> and stuff like that. That was just uh, it was excellent. So uh, awesome, awesome stuff. I did uh, actually do this the first time using copy paste, and then I remembered, you know, Ryder can do this for me. Yeah, uh, we're going to use that quote. Ryder can do that for me. That's it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> On that note, uh, thank you so much. Great presentation. Uh, we, we'd love to have you back. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. See you later. Thank you, Joe. Bye.